Kenny and I uh, started making these halters just not even a year ago, huh? Or maybe a year ago? Yeah, probably a little over. <clears throat> but I thought for years on these halters, you know, I've haltered a lot of colts and you're kind of busy with one hand and you're trying to put a halter on with one hand and they collapse. These rings down here that are on most of them just, just allow it to collapse so you're coming inside out and all that. So I always thought the first thing we should do is eliminate that ring and just make it like a hackamore to where the crown piece here is attached solid. So we got that. Now we need a ring or something to tie a lead rope in and, and a lot of times that ring's not heavy but we got a heavy ring there and uh, then there's no hardware over here to fumble around with. And if I knew a better way besides a buckle, because the buckle is a weak link, uh, these holes are too big and this got a little flimsy and I, I sent it back to Kenny and of course he warrantied it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we started making the holes smaller. The hole's just big enough for that tongue to get through. And those work better. And uh, so the only, the only hardware is where the halter goes and where the adjustment is there on the, the buckle. And we've done a little adjusting, uh, you know, we've done about... We modified them two or three times before yeah, gonna, you come up with what you like. I'm going to say we only had a couple of prototypes to where we fine-tuned it and made this a little longer and this a little higher and this and that and the other. And, but the other thing I like is, is uh, the regular halters with the rings on them, uh, this is what gets trashed first, is your, where your holes are. And the really flimsy ones rip out, and, but the rest of the halter is kind of usable. So I'd have Kenny put this heavier nylon onto the ring of these regular halters, but I'd have him make this strap here about six inches longer. Because what's really annoying is you only have about maybe six inches of holes typically and so you got to have about three different halters because if you got a big horse you know, you got to have a, a bigger halter and then it doesn't go short enough for a little horse and vice versa so i thought that's nonsense just have a, a long enough strap with enough holes and so i don't know that's every bit of 12 inches worth of holes there and so you can adjust this down. People was saying, well, yeah, we'd like your halters, but why don't you make a colt halter? That right there is a colt halter. The nose band's a little bit sloppy. I mean, if you're gonna go show them, you might want a different halter, but you could grab that, and I have, and go put it on a yearling, and go ahead and do your halter breaking, whatever you're gonna do, handling, and put it out in this last hole, and unless you got some big 12,000 pound draft horse, that's going to fit any, any big saddle horse. Mm -hmm. And you only need one halter. I sold a guy in Texas these, and he has little quarter horses, cutting horse type kind of things. And uh, he didn't like that strap, so he cut it off and burned it, so he only had a little bit. Well, you don't need to need them for a, a big horses, so that's fine, I guess, but I, I don't mind that. I just tuck it in the throat latch there, like that, so it ain't flopping around and they're not gonna rub it and get it loose in the trailer or anything. Mm -hmm. But I don't even care to have that. Well, right we, there. we've since changed the buckle there, too. Yeah, we just cut up a bunch of old junky halters and stole the buckles off them to start with, but <clears throat> Again, that that's what breaks this down is bending it back and forth. Yeah. So that's one of the things in my design. Well, let's let's just eliminate bending it back and forth. Tuck it in there. Now, it might not look pretty, but uh, that's that's as effective as anything and functional. And that's all I care about is effective and functional. And if you want to be pretty, go buy you a nice leather halter or something. But. Anyway, that's one project that Kenny, Kenny and I have worked on. He charges dearly for them, but <laughs> I tell people they're, they're lifetime halter. If you can tear them up or find something wrong with them, send them back and we'll build a better one. Just don't tell everybody you did it, but uh, 
but that's I, I want to know what's wrong with it and uh, you know the smaller holes is and really other than a few adjustments there and the, <clears throat> making sure the holes don't get too big and flexible. yeah we've got smaller holes now and I think we didn't we change the length of the throat latch yep once and then we changed most people won't know but we just use a 999 buckle now it's a real common buckle and you can get those anywhere that's not the price that's the number yeah <laughs> well you know i i think they're expensive because he you can go buy a a cheap halter for what 20 bucks 25 bucks i, I haven't maybe bought maybe even less than that no, but 50 or where where is it five years from now where is it a year from now if you're using them mm -hmm. i mean if you're if you're starting colts like me and tying them up and you know they're going to hit the end of it once in a while and buckles break them holes rip out uh i used to have a couple halters and i don't know where i stole them but they were tough and i mean the buckles uh, were stout steel tongue brass buckles and the crown was built good and it had all the other hardware but it was heavy <clears throat> and I had them for years and uh, somebody left them hanging on a fence somewhere when I got to traveling and I don't have either one of them now but I probably had them for like 20 25 years and they were the same 25 years later as it was when I they weren't new when I got them I don't know even where I got them, but I realized how durable they were, and uh, then I started paying attention. But man, in that 25 years, I went probably, probably went through 2,500 other junky stuff. I'm yeah, not, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but it's easy to go through junky halters. So you know, if you're if you're using them and need need something durable, that's that's what I've tried to do is make these durable. There's a guy in Florida that, that works big horses, a lot of English horses, and and he's you know these horses are all kind of sour horses. That's what he does is rehab them, and and I sent him some, and, and I said you you just find out where the weak link is and let us know because he's gonna he'll be the first one to to have one fall apart. Does he like him? Yeah, he he took like ten of them or fifteen of them or something. Yeah, that's why you want more again now, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And I, when I first started making them for Martin, I didn't think they would sell, and they're the least favorite thing I do in here to make. That's why he charges so much. <laughs> they are time consuming, and when you have this piece right here is the worst. When you have three layers of it to try to get it to all come out even. I found that you gotta put chalk marks on it, a third and a third, so that you fold it to the chalk mark and then that helps a lot. But if you just try to do it blind, you sit there for 10 minutes or end up cutting it off because you got a big bubble in it when you get to the end. Well, I'm sure it's easier <clears throat> to make them the way they traditionally make them with all the extra hardware, but that's what was always a pain in the butt when you're trying to, I'd be haltering these colts from another horse, and of course I got got one hand busy, you know, on the horse I'm riding or holding the horse or something like that, and you're trying to put this halter on with one hand. Yeah. And and buckle it. Yeah, and you probably got a flag in your and, hand. Yeah. And uh, you know the uh, when I used to ride saddle broncs, them horses stick their head down in the chute, and here you are trying to to fish this around and get their nose in it. Well, you can't put it on like this. You got to get it around like this and and you don't have a hold of this. You know, so you're trying to hook that nose and bring it up and then you turn it around, you know, kind of pull it around so it rotates around their nose to get it on. And if that won't stay open, good luck. Yeah. But if that stays open like that, then you can kind of rope their nose and you don't get it going around there like that a couple of times and it and it works up over their muzzle and mm -hmm. and gets up there and then you can you can kind of get it on but uh anyway there's just a lot of stuff that i've experimented with the easy way and the hard way of doing things and what falls apart and what doesn't fall apart and 
but I've made a few halters with all the hardware and they're they're a lot easier to make. Well, hopefully these these are like them other halters I had 25 years from now they might just be a little stiffer and a little dirtier but they're still functional. Mhm. Mm and if they're not, you're not probably not going to be around to <laughs> rebuild them again anyway. So So we better stock up now, huh? Yeah. You're pretty old, so they yeah. you might not. Yeah, I think I'm a month or two <laughs> older than you. <laughs> oh, a lot older, yeah. So.